as we continue to explore the theme of restoration, uh, I want to turn in this mini lecture to uh, the topic of personal restoration and the role that the spiritual disciplines play in that. Uh, throughout this week, you'll be reading a few articles and completing a spiritual disciplines project. So what I'd like to do uh, in this brief presentation is introduce you to two important writers uh, regarding the spiritual disciplines, at least from a um, evangelical Protestant perspective. And the first author that you should be aware of is Dallas Willard, and he has written a kind of classic text called The Spirit of the Disciplines. And in talking about the disciplines, he says, my central claim is that we can become like Christ by doing one thing, by following him in the overall style of life he chose for himself. What activities did Jesus practice? Such things as solitude and silence, prayer, simple and sacrificial living, intense study and meditation upon God's word and God's ways, and service to others. Some of these will certainly be even more necessary for us than they were for him. Uh, because of our greater or different need. But in a balanced life of such activities, uh, we will be constantly enlivened by the kingdom not of this world, instead the kingdom of truth, as seen in John 18. And so if you, uh, as you go through the week and uh, start working on that spiritual disciplines project, if you uh, have access to this text, that might be a great resource for you to learn about a specific discipline. Uh, Richard Foster then helps us explore a little bit more about what exactly the spiritual disciplines are, and he does this in his classic text, Celebrating the Discipline. And uh, again, you might want to look at that text as you move through this week to, to just get his perspective uh, on what the different disciplines are and how they're practiced. But when we answer this question, what are the spiritual disciplines, uh, Foster writes, they are life practices that help us to refocus our lives so that we can hear God and be transformed into his image. He suggests that they are diverse practices that are practiced intentionally, but not with rigidity. So we don't want the disciplines to become a kind of a legalistic rule that we feel like we have to follow. And they are disciplines of grace. And so that, again, is uh, how they are actually quite contrary to a legalistic attitude. They're a way for us to every day or every, in every experience encounter the grace of God and know deeply his love for us. And Foster writes, the spiritual disciplines set us free from the ingrained habit patterns of sin and build within us ingrained habit patterns instead of righteousness. Foster also points to four dangers of the spiritual disciplines. First of all, as previously mentioned, is the temptation to turn them into law. Secondly, is the failure to understand the social implications of the disciplines and the way they impact our relationships. Thirdly, is the temptation to view them as virtuous in themselves. Instead, they, they simply put us in a position where God can do his work of transformation in us. And fourthly, looking into the... Uh, we may tend to look toward the disciplines rather than towards a relationship with God. So, with God. So, we want to be sure that we have our priorities and our focus correct as we approach the whole concept of uh, spiritual disciplines. Uh, in Richard Foster's kind of discussion of the disciplines, he breaks them up into three sets of four. And so, first of all, he talks about four inward disciplines. They include first meditation or the practice of listening, hearing, and obeying the voice of God. Helps us to see life uh, from God's perspective. Second uh, is the discipline of fasting or the practice of voluntarily denying ourselves of something that we normally have. Uh, thirdly is the idea of study or the practice of thinking rightly about all things so that our lives are then conformed to truth. And fourthly is the idea of prayer or practice of perpetual communion with God, and he says that it stands at the heart of the inner life. Again, this is all from the Celebration of Discipline, uh, Richard Foster's book. So the second set of four that he talks about are four outward disciplines. They include, first of all, solitude, 
or the practice of being alone in the presence of God. So Foster writes, in stillness, our false busy selves are unmasked and seen for the impostors they really are. Secondly is the idea of submission. This is the practice of re releasing our plans, desires, and agendas so that we can lift those of others before our own. Thirdly is service, or a lifestyle of dying to oneself and meeting the needs of others, whether they be big or small. And fourthly is the discipline of simplicity, or the practice of removing those internal and external voices that compete for our religion, our, our allegiance uh, to Christ in this kingdom. It's the discipline of trusting Christ for all of our needs. And then he talks about four corporate disciplines. And the first is the idea of confession, or the practice of admitting our sins and sinfulness to God and to one another, and then receiving forgiveness. Uh, William Temple writes of worship that it is to quicken the, the conscience by the holiness of God, to feed the mind with the truth of God, to purge the imagination by the beauty of God, to open the heart to the love of God, and to devote the will to the purpose of God. So through worship, we give our whole beings to God to center on him. Thirdly is the idea of guidance, or the practice of individually and corporately just listening to God, discerning his voice, and obeying his command. I'll talk about that elsewhere uh, in another mini-lecture. And the last one is this idea of celebration, or the presence of releasing our disappointments to God, and then allowing him to transform them into something purposeful. And it's the joy of obedience to Christ. Um, Dallas Willard, in his breakdown of the spiritual discipline, uh, he talks about them as disciplines of abstinence or disciplines of engagement. He lists a few extra ones here, like frugality or chastity. And uh, if again, if you want to access his book to, to learn more about um, the disciplines as he outlines them, you'll find different lists and uh, different numbers, but you know, typically uh, we can talk about anywhere from 10 to 12 basic discipline disciplines that uh, people have found helpful in the spiritual life. And these are two important resources that you should be aware of. Dallas Willard and his book, uh, The Spirit of the Disciplines, and then Richard Foster and his book, Celebration of Discipline.